If you needed to speak with a New Jersey mayor, committeeman, municipal attorney, clerk, or public works director this week, your chances would be better if you were in Atlantic City. That's where the New Jersey State League of Municipalities was holding its 102nd annual convention. It's the event where the numerous obligations of local government were the topic of seminars, panel discussions, and continuing education training, and where local officials were busy making presentations, attending presentations, touring row upon row of vendor displays, networking, politicking, and even, we hear, squeezing in a party or two. Let's meet the man in charge of it all. Hi there, can you tell me who you are? Michael Darcy, I'm the executive director with the New Jersey League of Municipalities. So Michael, you're the guy that's running this show here, this big show in Atlantic City these three days. Uh, and you've been executive director, you told me, for three years now? Well, started in uh, July of 2015. So okay. This is uh, the third conference I've taken on as executive director. Prior to that, I worked with the league since 1990. Okay, fantastic. Now, how is... Tell me, for those who may not know, almost everybody in New Jersey knows about the State League and this convention, but give us the elevator pitch anyway for someone who just might not be familiar sure. with it. I mean, the purpose of the conference is really to get all the different professionals that work within municipalities together mm-hmm. for technical training, for training on policy issues, and for training on what's coming up in the, uh, in the horizon, what's going to be new in, in local government over the next year or so. Mm-hmm. And that's been the purpose of this conference for over 100 years now. Terrific. And I see it is pretty um, broad, the, the topics that you covered here today. I was going to a couple of the conferences. Of course, I'm going to the ones that are more involving environment and energy because that's my audience. But I see you've got anything all pretty much that could involve a, a local official. That's true. We have a partnership with Sustainable Jersey. They do about eight different educational programs on sustainability issues. We've got technology programs, budgeting programs, planning, zoning programs, recreation, you name it. Uh, so it's, it's quite broad uh, in its scope. You've even got one that I'm hoping to stop, poke my head into in a few minutes on the siting of microbreweries. <laughs> yes, yes, that's been a big economic development tool, and mayors are trying to figure out exactly how to work with that. That's great. So how was your attendance this year? You're doing well? You're... We are doing well. I think that the uh, transition with the new governor has generated a lot of enthusiasm, and that's uh, kind of resulted in higher numbers. We're about 500 or so higher than we were last year. Well, that's great. Um, so we're real happy. We probably will hit 17,000. Fantastic. And you're going out on a real strong note, too. You have the new governor appearing here, all right? Yes. Our final day, we have a big luncheon, Mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, governor-elect and the lieutenant governor-elect are going to be at that luncheon. That's fantastic. Well, Michael, you're keeping the great tradition going here and doing it in style, and I want to thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. All right. One of the presentations we caught explored local government's growing use of social media to stay. In our next video, we'll meet a few of the many... Hi there, can you tell me who you are? Yes, John Ducey, the mayor of the Township of Brick in Ocean County. Okay, Shore Town, Brick, yes. Yes. Um, mayor, your uh, township, Brick, is, uh, has been involved uh, for a short while now in social media, and you in particular. Let's start with the township first of all. Well, how is the township using social media? Yeah, the township, we've uh, been using uh, social media for many years at oh, the township okay. level. All right. uh, we have a Facebook page where we have over 20,000 followers. Uh, we have a Twitter account uh, with over 3,000 followers and an Instagram account with uh, almost 900 followers. Wow. And what we do is we uh, generate uh, posts on Facebook and Twitter at least once, if not twice a day, about uh, general news about the town, keeping people updated when their leaf uh, pickup schedule is, uh, emergency closings, maybe a you know, road is closed for an accident. Um, and we also do it for brand new businesses with ribbon cuttings, um, as well as our park openings. Anything that's happening in town, we post right on our social media. Wonderful. What's the reaction from your residents? Uh, people really appreciate it because it keeps, gives them instant access. Rather than waiting for a weekly paper to come out every Friday and reading mm-hmm. about something that happened, they not only get the advance notice that we have a movie that particular night or a concert that particular night, but then they get some follow-up. Uh, while it's going on, we post live. Um, uh, what is happening, pictures of the concert, and then, uh, 
you know, maybe a day or two later, we do a little summary of how great the event was. Oh, that's terrific. Now, Mayor, you're way out there on the cutting edge yourself. I understand you're, you're doing Facebook Live. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yes. <laughs> I, I have my own Twitter account, at Mayor Ducey, uh -huh. uh, but I also do Facebook Live. So I do that twice a month. I started in December uh, of 2016, uh, and we do one during the day hours, usually noon, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and then I do one per month uh, at either 6, 6.30 or 7.00. And that's to make sure we hit all different uh, demographic of people, uh, whether or not they work during the night, during the day. And it's a great opportunity. I just uh, do a half-hour show, and I answer whatever questions are posted to me. So it's great transparency. Uh, you, you can't get more transparent than being live on camera <laughs> and having people ask you whatever the questions may be. It could be uh, something like, uh, when is my road going to be paved, or what store is going into a, a certain building. Or it could be, uh, you know, f some funny stuff that they like to pull, like uh, is a hot dog a sandwich, and uh, what what type, what flavor wings do I like? So it's all over the map. I just answer each and every one in the order they come in, and and have fun with it. That's right. With Facebook Live, you uh, the live streaming format, you're sort of stuck in a way. But I mean, that's a great thing. But do you ever have political opponents uh, take advantage of it and try to trap you in anything? Uh, you, you have you have people who uh, will write you know, certain things. I gave an example of um, you know one, one individual writes, "Oh, is it true the only way you get a promoted promotion in town is if uh, you're a member of the Knights of Columbus?" And I <laughs> just I answer the question, "Oh, Joe, uh, you're asking about the Knights of Columbus," and I, uh, "No, that's not true." <laughs> And then I move on to the next question. So that's the thing. You answer the questions, you answer them honestly, and you move on. If you don't know the answers, what I do is I, uh, I actually uh, tell them. I say, uh, you know, Bob, I don't know the answer to that question, uh, but listen to the beginning of next show, and I will give you the response because there's things that need to be researched, and I don't want to speak out of turn and give wrong information. Well, I'm sure the, res uh, the residents appreciate the uh, openness and the <laughs> and the transparency of it and also your um, uh your honesty and uh, your bravery for standing up there and taking these things live. Yeah, it's, it's a really good. You know, people come up to me all the time in the food stores or at the parks, and they say, you know, we really appreciate the Facebook Live. We get more information in that half hour uh, than we do from newspapers because newspapers aren't writing about what people want to hear about, and people are asking what they want to hear about, and I'm wow. giving them the response. Well, that's terrific. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mayor, thank you very much for your time here at the uh, League of uh, Municipalities Convention today, and good luck in the future with. Uh, Social Hi there, media. can you tell Thank me who you, you are? Sure, my name is Brett Pugach. Uh, I'm an attorney with Genova Burns LLC, and I was one of the presenters speaking about social media today. Uh, social media is becoming more popular uh, in towns with uh, mayors and uh, you know councilmen and whatnot, uh, as we heard today on the panel. Uh, but there are some pitfalls, or at least things to look out for, and, and you gave them some uh, legal guidance in this regard today. Yeah. That's correct, that's correct. <laughs> Um, so yes, we know there's a lot of benefits of, of social media, of course. Um, one of the things I spoke about, as you mentioned, was the legal risks that are associated with it. Uh, so one of the first things I would say is that it's very important for employers to have a social media policy. And what that policy should do is it should say what types of activities and conduct are prohibited and what give examples of the kinds of things that are acceptable. Um, one of the things that you want to make sure you're doing is you want to make sure that employees are are not discouraged from uh, talking to one another. Uh, they have a legal right under the National Labor Relations Act, for example, uh, to protect the concerted activity, which means that they have a right to talk or complain if they want about the terms and conditions of, uh, of their employment. So when you're creating a policy, you have to be very careful to not have a policy that's overbroad that would make an employee think that they are prohibited from doing that. But you also want to make sure that you're giving clear examples of the types of things that are prohibited and the types of things that, that are acceptable. Are there any uh, particular cases that were they point out the real need for this, where things have blown up a little bit for towns? Sure, and as we spoke about, we went through a couple of different cases. Uh, uh, a lot of them actually come out of the NLRB, and they're not directly applicable to, uh, to public employees, for example, and public employers. Uh, but as we mentioned during the presentation, PERC kind of has not weighed in on this. Uh, so we kind of take a lot of our guidance from the NLRB when we're uh, advising clients uh, of what to do. But one of the things with the cases is they're a little bit all over the place and uh, all of, everything's kind of taken in the totality of circumstances on a case-by-case -case basis. 
Uh, so I, I guess I would leave it at that and say <laughs> that, uh, you know, hopefully if you're able to sit through the presentation, you could see some of the examples of things that the NLRB found to be acceptable and policies that they found to be overbroad, for example. So like uh, social media itself, the legal ramifications are still developing. Uh, it, legal ramifications are developing. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. Uh, this is a topic that, uh, you know, it, something new is coming up every day and the law is lagging a little bit behind, but trying to keep up as we go every day. Well, I'm sure that those folks who were here today got a lot out of your presentation, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Great. In our next video, we'll meet a few of the many folks who manned the booths at the convention's exhibitors hall. They were there to meet with local officials and hopefully to sell them on equipment, services, and even policy issues. From Atlantic City, I'm Frank Brill for EnviroPolitics.